Good day and welcome to one of uh, another episode of um, the Back to Eden Table Talk. Actually, it's our first episode um, of a table talk that we are doing. Um, it's something new that we're uh, doing here as uh, men of uh, the Back to Eden Lifestyle uh, Project. Um, the reason why we wanted to do something like this is to give you guys kind of an inside scoop as to uh, what this project is about. Um, where the ideas came from and how we are progressing. Uh, we wanted to do it from the perspective as men, um, uh, fathers, husbands, um, and then give you guys a bit of uh, insight as to what we do have to deal with on a daily basis once you take a, a step of faith. Uh, I, wanted, I want to introduce each and every person uh, on the table so you have an, uh, uh, a name uh, to the face so I'm, I'm just gonna do a round table and have uh, these gentlemen introduce themselves so um, let's start with the with with the elders on the table I don't know <laughs> you look at that yeah, which one? <laughs> am I or you are uh, maybe you, maybe maybe you. you. <laughs> who got a great here yeah, yeah. go ahead mr. cook uh -huh. I'm Jared cook from Curacao, um, I have I am a father from four sons, uh, married to Odysia Stuger, and uh, now we are living in Curacao. Okay, Jero. Um Yes, I'm Alejandro Fleming. I'm from the friendly island of Saint Martin. One wife, one child. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, my name is Danny Vaquero. Um, where am I from? That's a good well, question. That's a good yes, question. Let's fill us in. Well, we'll probably get into detail once you started giving me the interview. Okay. But for starters, I was born in Panama. However, I wasn't raised here. I sort of grew up in between um, Venezuela and the U.S. And I went back to Panama. Wow. I'm a father of four and a grandfather of one. Oh, wow. So I guess I'm, that makes me older. That makes you the Abraham, actually. <laughs> I'm Ken White Brookson, uh, married um, to us in Brookson Stuga. I have one daughter, Kiana Brookson. And I was also born in St. Martin, Fenny Island, St. Martin. Mm -hmm. ah, St. Martin's taking over. Yes, sir. <laughs> the next person. I'm Ashworth Williams, Jr. Um, I have uh, three children. Um, one, six, two, and, and two months, um, born in, in the U.S. Uh, and, and fleeing the U.S. No, play <laughs> Let me formally introduce myself, Ruben Stuger. Um, I guess I'm the youngest here. Um, <laughs> a father of four girls. So Gerald has the boys, I have the girls. Um, wife is Joveline uh, Stuger. And uh, indeed, uh, recently moved from the Netherlands to Panama. So, um, some of the things that we have in common that brings us all together here, gentlemen, um, is that we are making a move. We're making a move to go to the country. And actually, the first question is, uh, I want you guys to, uh, to chime in on that. Why this move? I guess most of us, all of us are coming from urban life, uh, all of us had our work, business, whatnot, and we decided to make this move. So any one of you to please jump in and tell us what made you choose this lifestyle? You got a mic. I guess <clears throat> I will be the first one. Um, I think I was the first one to move out of <laughs> real so. It's only right that you go first. Yeah, <laughs> Well, in August will be three years since we moved from the States. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons we decided was um, actually we wanted to do it earlier, but we, the time wasn't uh, what God had to prepare for us. Mm -hmm. But uh, reading uh, Country Living, mm -hmm. starting the um, Spirit of Prophecy and seeing the times that we are living, we, uh, we decided that it was time to start making the move, making mm -hmm. the progress. Um, it took it took us about about a year and a half to decide what we were going to do. I mean, our move it wasn't just my family. We, we moved. We, we are in laws, mm -hmm. which they require care. Mm -hmm. So whatever move we, we made, 
and how to accommodate everyone yeah. in the house. Um, not only that, it was, you know, there was a few challenges. We never lived in the country. We never knew what was living in the country. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just to come here and um, just live in the country. I mean, one of the other things that we had to encourage to do is to start growing our own food. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how to plant, where to get my seeds, mm -hmm. what kind of seeds should I plant, how often should I plant it. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, le a learning curve. Mm -hmm. It got accelerated once the pandemic hit and we became into the lockdown and then that's when we realized that it was it was it was now or never mm -hmm. so <clears throat> we you know i started learning you know we we're still going through a process to see what works what doesn't work mm -hmm. and with the help we got of god you know everything has taken off and you know we go in places and one of the things that i that i encourage you mm -hmm. and, and anyone who might watch this video is we have to have the right attitude and be willing to learn. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you can come here and just because you're in the country and you don't engage the, having a close relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to have the attitude you want. You want to have the, <clears throat> the willingness mm -hmm. of, of, of wanting to do it. And one of the things that we, that we face as a family when we, when we first got here, you know, it was my wife, my kids, you know, I remember walking around and going around the loop and I used to say to God, well, hey, I brought them here. Now you got to work in their hearts. Now you got to do your part. And, and in the beginning, my family was scared. You know, you, you would look at a snake. Oh, what do I do? And my wife would scream and, you know, say all kinds of things. Now, next thing I know, she kills it. I'm like, hey, don't kill that one. That's not the type of snake you should kill. That's not a venom snake. Exactly, and you know, but just to see how far we mm -hmm. have gone, and, and again, it's only been three years, yeah. and just to see the blessings that is to be here. Amen, amen. Is that like what God wanted? Definitely, I, I like um, the, that you're talking a bit of the transition, we'll get a bit more into that, um, but you are, basically, you, you have gone before us and we are we're actually we are coming in right now and trying to find our way as well so i want to hear from the other gentlemen as well uh, why country living see if we have common ground why are we doing this what is uh first and foremost for you when you say why country living what comes to mind well one of the first thing that comes to mind is that um when you are a true believer of um, the lord and you want to do his will um, you you read up on what what has God um, told us in His um, Word about the times that were to come upon us, mm -hmm. and then um, once you have read that, you know, um, see that there is going to come a time when we will have um, trouble in the sense of um, buying a cell. You wanna you are managed to go secure a piece of land for yourself and um, uh, where you can grow your own food. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've noticed is that while you are living on the islands in any um, place where it's crowded and has um, city life is that my daughter was growing up and driving her in the car, one of the things I could remember clearly is that she would ask me, Daddy, why is that lady in the pool? Mm -hmm. you know, wow. um, mm -hmm. what, why, why is she um, half naked? Wow. And then you realize your, your, your daughter at that young age is uh, beholding things, images that she should not be beholding. Mm -hmm and it becomes part of a culture mm. and I, um, as I said, um, you want to follow God, you want to protect the avenues of, of uh, a soul, you want to protect the avenues of your soul as well, that um, it don't get corrupt, you know, and I want my daughter to be able to live a life where um, she can learn about God and grow in Christ mm -hmm. and um, I have seen where it has become too much um, of negative influence, crying, a lot of sirens, you know, um, more and more the peace is um, leaving your surroundings because of yeah. how the crime is raising. Mm -hmm. So when you have read um, the, what country living offers you, mm -hmm. um, beholding nature, learning more about God, uh, it's different than books. Books are good, but when you can see uh, a seed put in the ground and germinate, germinate and mm -hmm. food, food is growing, um, yeah. you can point her to the Creator who from the beginning had put the seed yet to provide us um, food and health. You know, and um, they can learn more about the Creator besides the Bible, which is very important. They can now see God in a different, uh, from a different aspect. 
Okay. You know, so it's about also building character and trying to preserve okay. um, that which you love, which is your family. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Um, so if I would just summarize, most of what you're uh, speaking about is your, your daughter, your child, your family, basically. Um, that's mm -hmm. why country living. Um, the other uh, gentleman, um, is it the same? Do you have other reasons, alternative reasons of you wanted to make this move? Well, basically the primary reason would be uh, character development. Mm. Uh, we, we understood through uh, reading uh, Spirit of Prophecy and we also see examples in the Bible, uh, especially if you go to Genesis and you saw that the sons of God and it was really um, attracted um, to the mountains area mm -hmm. and you also saw that the daughter of, of men meaning those who are uh, not godly are disconnected from God was more in the city area mm -hmm. we also saw Jesus um, frequently went um, into the mountains to go pray mm -hmm. tranquil mm -hmm. um, so when you talk about a character uh, developing a character after the similitude of God. Mm -hmm. The best place to be in is the first lesson book. Mm -hmm. um, the first lesson book, and that's not the Bible, that's nature. That's nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So, in nature, like yeah, was already mentioned, planting, being um, in, in the surrounding um, nature, the trees, the heron, the, the birds, yeah. these kind, this awakens, yeah your desire, your senses, and a connection with the God of, of creation. Mm -hmm. And we don't worship the trees and those other stuff, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the created things, but the creator, the creator. himself. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you know, city life. Mm -hmm. As we saw, we just saw in the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, one thing that struck me that actually made me know, hey, it's time to move is, when the first wave hit France, mm -hmm. right, it, the, a, a second wave came. Mm -hmm. And when the second wave came, you know what happened? They showed on national TV. Almost everybody tried to get out of the yes. city. Mm -hmm. And where were they heading to? To the country. To the country. They yeah. said it. They said, well, I have a cabin in the country. Mm -hmm. Because of the consistent lockdowns mm -hmm. and also the violence mm -hmm. we saw it in France too, where the people. Uh, automatically come while you're sitting out eating and killing, you know, mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you even see it among um, the general population that, you know, uh, there is a other place that is uh, yeah. more better. Yeah, that people are looking for them. Naturally, they, they tend to go to, even though you may not be religious right. uh, yeah, per se, people know that there is a place you need to go with your family when yeah. Things get rough in the city. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, in the country. Yeah, and where you uh, unwind. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cook, tell yes. us. Uh, country living. <coughs> um, as a matter of fact, I am living in a country where I am, but uh, the difference is that uh, where I'm coming from, you don't have enough water. Mm. Um, you are very limited. On an island, uh, you, don't, you have to import food all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, having four boys, uh, I've been grown up in the time that you didn't have pipe water. Sometimes uh, the truck had to come and bring water. Uh, things have become very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and country living, when you have to work, mm -hmm. then you have more value for right. the things that you have. That's right. And that is a character development. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, character development, it is not only uh, to um, yeah, to receive the things easy, the blessings, the will come, but when you work for it, then you understand. Appreciate and it. you appreciate how God is loving us, how He, he uh, gave us that strength mm -hmm. to, to work and bless us. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one of the reasons I appreciate country living so much. Mm -hmm. uh, it is something that I'm doing, I'm continue doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, because if you're working, the job that they have, uh, you have to work uh, with people, with stress, uh, uh, time, uh, you have to deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come back and you go in your, uh, uh, with your plants and, and, and working in the preparing uh, you know, the crop as well, mm -hmm. all the stress is going. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, uh, um, and that is what 
I appreciate and I learn much about country living. Right. And I want for my children to understand and appreciate what God has given us mm -hmm. and, uh, and we can do it in Panama. God has blessed us with a very beautiful land mm -hmm. and we can see God providence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Panama, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is God providence. It's not on our own Amen. force of our own merit. Amen. We're going to get to that because you talk yeah. about providence and there are questions in here that we have to talk a little to the providence. But Ash, we'd like to hear yeah. from you as well, my brother. Um, you're not here as yet. As you can yeah. see, Ash is in a bit different location than we are. We are in the place to be. Uh, <laughs> Ash was here recently, but um, and soon you'll be reunited. But tell us, what makes you want to come over here? Yeah, I believe that God is leading me and my family to country living. Uh, it's something that has been on my heart for, for several years and been speaking with my wife about it for, for some time. And to make that move, growing up in the, in the States, uh, and, and there are countries living in the States, there is, um, but there's no place really in the States, maybe California, but it's not much of a country living. Uh, but where you can grow um, vegetables, fruits, and things of that nature all year round. And um, I believe that God created us and God created all of these things, fruits and vegetables, where they automatically grow by themselves. We have, we have no involvement in the process of those things. We can if we want to. We can grow things if we want to, but uh, yeah, trees grow, they bear fruit, they fall on the ground, and then they continue. Right? That's why you can see trees and fruits and vegetables in areas where people have never touched before. So I feel that God has put these things for us as blessings that we can have a sustainable life. And I'm not living in an area. In, in the States, they, they cut down the trees, they build homes, and they plant trees, and they sell that to you. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, whereas you can live in a place where there are trees and you can, you know, have fresh oxygen and things of that nature. So I think country living is very really suitable for every human being. Um, but I believe that we have strayed away for a very long time away from Christ and his ideal. Um, so that's why we're coming back to it. Um, and it's God is, God is pulling, pulling us, uh, and Panama is, is the place to be. So like, as you said. Um, so, <laughs> so that's that's the that's the place that we're going to head. Mm -hmm. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Um, I think um, there are some there are some crucial points that uh, we have all brought up. Indeed, we're looking for that tranquil environment. All of us, indeed, that one of the things that binds us is that we are um, we are Christians. Right. We God is first and foremost in our lives. Amen. And that's why we can sit around this table and have this talk because we feel we. Uh, we have that in common and then uh, besides that we believe family is central and everything that we do here the decisions that we make here is family based mm -hmm. and we bear the responsibility as leaders of the home it's looked upon us mm -hmm. if things go haywire, haywire yeah. right uh, so that's a big responsibility mm -hmm. um, and my, my following question is then like um, what has been your obstacle uh, in this transition? Knowing that indeed you have a family to take care of, knowing that you are coming from a place where uh, you probably you, you provided the, the, the food, right? You had a work, you, you got your salary, uh, everything was uh, well planned out. Uh, grocery stores around the corner, etc., etc. Uh, what has been the most difficult? in the transition or in some of us we are not here yet so we are still transitioning into this lifestyle tell us what uh, are some obstacles things that we uh, we can look at okay let me take you up on that one mm -hmm. um right before we even moved here i realized that um for the first probably first year year and a half we had a detox ourselves mm -hmm from the life we want mm, to have, mm -hmm. okay? Because let's face it, I mean, all we knew it was, like you said, going to the stores and what to work, we to earn the money. So, you know, leaving that 
over nine and it started and, and do it in, in, in our case it was a 160 mm. you know it took some time to adjust mm -hmm. where where do I go from here where do you know where do I get my stuff mm -hmm. what am I gonna do because all those questions you know are rough what are we gonna do what are we gonna eat mm -hmm. how are we gonna make a living mm -hmm. um, and for us we have whether we like it or not our own minister mm -hmm. because we have three people to care for mm -hmm. So you know it's a full-time job that we face, yep. and um, and you know back in the states we could have easily put it in a nursing home, mm -hmm. and I see you in your birthday and <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the sad reality. Yeah, and I said to my wife that that's not what I want to do mm -hmm. for my parents, and that's not I don't feel that's the right move. Mm -hmm. So you know, all that in have make us be more patient. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy to care for an elder. I have spoken to nurse. Yeah. And they say, hey, you need to get some help because then you're going to get stressed out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, i seen some character developing on my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, we become more patient. We, and, you know, and again, those are her parents. And, and you know, we are there for them. Yeah. Another thing that I want to touch, the sooner you do it, the better for your kids. Mm -hmm. Because as the older they get, mm -hmm. the harder it is. That's mm -hmm. true. Because they already have they already seen things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they start to compare them yeah, yeah, yeah. okay oh but i used to have that but yeah. the city was better this yeah and um versus when they you know they own the tent mm -hmm. that you can still work in their character and develop in a different way mm -hmm. um but again i feel that with time looking at nature mm -hmm. working with nature mm -hmm. it's impossible not to see god mm -hmm. Ev everywhere you look you will find god and and, and i have say say jokingly to people that I, that I know that they don't believe in Jesus, that give me someone who's atheist and put it on the country, mm -hmm. put it on the mountains, and it's impossible not to see God mm -hmm. through His words. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I love, I, love, uh, uh, I love that. And I think what the viewers can get from that and what I think all of us can get from what you, you just mentioned is uh, the, one of the difficult aspects of making this move is... The people aspect because you're not only moving yourself you could have made that decision but you're moving with your wife you're moving with your children and they need to make that adoption uh, and they don't they're not always going to be on the same page right. right but eventually we have to make the final decision and if you have a virtuous wife which i believe we have, or else we wouldn't Praise be the here. Lord. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> Praise yeah. the Lord. Um, you, um, then it it makes that process easier for us as men, and then uh, indeed the, the, the trusting aspect is ne necessary. And then you can get the kids uh, kids along. Um, I just want to move along because I don't want to uh, just stay at one question. I think Danny gave us a good answer as to I think the most difficult aspect in making the transition, mm -hmm. the people aspect. Um, then there are practical stuff indeed getting your paperwork etc yeah, etc but that's more you, we can send you a link and we you can find yeah. uh, information on how Q &A. to do that a Q and A exactly um, what I'm interested in to know from you guys um, is um, after you have moved after we have established because we're not just here moving to a country and going and living in a, in a house and with our family that's not the end goal. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. uh, we have a ministry uh, it's back to Eden lifestyle and we want to also um, do something with that ministry my question is what are you most looking forward to in doing as a ministry as um, a group of men um, however uh, what do you envision um, yeah. anyone I, I, I look forward to serving people uh that's that's important to me my my father my mother they've they've brought us up in being hospitable um always on sabbath we always brought folks over we have potluck people bring food usually they cook food they're really good cooks um so we got a chance to experience that as young people growing up and and, and serving people and I, I find that to be important if you look at the story of jesus throughout the Bible that says, what does religion mean? It's, you know, helping orphans and, 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 and widows. 
I think it's, it's important to serve people and in that you learn. Uh, you learn who God is, I believe. Um, but also you learn yourself. Um, but you learn how to handle people and how to treat them and respect and empathy. Uh, I believe that it's, it's so important to our lives. And that's what people, all of us need that. Um, we need to be served. And also we also need to serve. Um, so I, I look forward to serving people through through um, you know feeding them, you know, providing resources, all types of things. But definitely um, getting my hands dirty and helping folks. Amen. I mean, I think that is core uh, service, right? Etienne, I see you. Uh... Yeah, I, I like what my brother just mentioned. Uh, serving people. You know, I, I tell people, I like to remind person of an analogy. Um, a dollar can discriminate because you can go to a supermarket today with a dollar, you can get maybe five limes. But as soon as um, there's inflation or the demand goes up and supply is less, that same dollar can probably only get you one lime. But if I take a seed out of that lime and I plant it, I can get three of limes. And there's no discrimination because that three of lime now could feed more than 10 people, for example, or 20 people. So I can get my portion for my family, they can get their portion for their family, mm -hmm. and I can feed a poor man down the street. Mm -hmm. I can give some to the orphanage to make some lemon juice, for example. Mm -hmm. And this is what, um, it, the, the world system is a different system. Mm -hmm. You know, when God created this earth, all was supposed to work in network. Mm -hmm. um, when I grow food, whatever is excess, I was supposed to give it away. But when you trust yourself in the cities, um, you, 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 you are part of a different system where you have to go to a supermarket. Mm -hmm. But um, that is not the supermarket that um, God put Adam and Eve in. The supermarket mm -hmm. that God put him in is the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. where the fruits grow freely there. All he had to do was tend to it and care for the trees, and the trees would bring, bring, give him his fruit on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So in that, when God put you, uh, the country living is, uh, is a little pattern of what the Garden of Eden represents. It represents that you will be getting spiritual food, because in the Garden of Eden you learn of God, and you draw close to God through um, His creation. And at the same time, you get physical food that is for, to profit you um, health-wise, to, uh, to give you the meat mm -hmm. on your table. And when it says meat, uh, we're not talking about the flesh meat, but we're talking about as food, meat mm -hmm. representing food. Mm -hmm. So at this time where the world is suffering from so much poverty, mm -hmm. by um, growing food in the country, you can be able to impact lives. Mm -hmm. You can show people that there are still people in this world that cares. Mm -hmm. We know the greatest thing, as I said, is spiritual food, but there's also, uh, not but, however, there's also the, the physical aspect mm -hmm. that goes hand in hand. Definitely. So now you can care for the senior homes, the, the orphanage, um, the poor man down the street, and everyone will be able to see Jesus through your ministry, through your care and through your love. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is something that is very important that uh, we are trying to achieve here with uh, being able to get our land going, to get um, a greenhouse, to get agriculture going. All of that is not only for us as a tech people when I meet with them, but it's for reaching out to others Amen. in the place that is most necessary. Amen. Amen. I want to add up something real quick. Um, obviously, we all gone through the pandemic, and when the pandemic hit, probably, you know, here in Panama, we were in lockdown, and there was one day I was walking down, you know, down where I live, and one of my neighbors, he gave me a bag. He handed me a bag with... It had potatoes, plantains, green peppers. Mm -hmm. He just, hey, you have it. And then, you know, I come to my house and tomorrow, you know, count your blessings. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if we were in the city, <laughs> who's going to do that for you? And I'm like, yeah, people might, might, they might make fun of people who live in the country. Yeah. But let's face it. I mean, you can knock on someone's door and they will, they will have something to give that's you. Right. You can't do that in the city. Yeah, man. And that's, you know, again, one of the other blessings that you get by living here in the country. Definitely. Right. And I love the point both of you guys are making because um, it's easier to practice the, the, the lifestyle or the principles God is giving us in Scripture. Because God tells us many times, feed the poor. hungry, feed the poor, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we, we are, because we are so clogged up into the cities and we are hustling. just, we are hustling and we are, you can just make ends meet. You, where you have time, either if you're making good money, you don't even have time to do it. Mm -hmm. Or if you're just making sufficient for your family, you don't have the means to do it. 
But when you're here, you can see that, hey, when it's more than you can handle, more yes. than your family can handle. Yes. So it makes it easier to now apply the principle of right. freely giving. That's right. And it gets you into that mode of service and being able right. to do more. And, you know what I mean? and the law that govern, governs heaven is the law of love, mm -hmm. right. is the law of giving. Everywhere in nature, you see the law of giving. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when we participate in that, we are participating in that spirit of, of love mm -hmm. um, that governs heaven. What I like about this ministry mm -hmm. and what we are about to do or what we are busy doing is that aspect, yes, of um, helping others, uh, grow, growing food and being able to uh, distribute food and also from the medical missionary side mm. where we are um, able to practice uh, using natural treatments in order to um, help um, uh, persons heal um, we know the slogan let food be your medicine and medicine, medicine your food, food. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we will see that we are following the pattern of Christ mm -hmm. right he first helped them he feed that he fed them mm -hmm. and them. yes and then afterwards they were open that the he gospel. could have give given them the gospel Amen. good news right and i'm so looking forward to that mm -hmm. because you know in the city there's a lot of atheists or a lot of doubts mm -hmm. um, you know we have a lot of television a lot of movies a lot of killing violence mm -hmm. and it's rampant also in the streets so sometimes when you come to speak a word you know it's you know it's hard to get in it's like uh, mm -hmm. you know but the other approach with medical missionary mm -hmm. uh, first helping taking care of the needs of, of others uh, it becomes an inter interweight wet wedge mm -hmm. right that it uh, they will be more open and susceptible to hear because no it's not only that they're hearing about the one you serve of the other God you serve through words, mm -hmm. right? Yes, but they're now see they're seeing it in yes. you, so now it's easier to believe. Definitely. And also connecting it with um, prophetic events, mm -hmm. right? When you connect it also with prophetic events and what's happening, you know, they can grasp, mm -hmm. right? Uh, draw uh, closer to God. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, uh, Gerald, you can uh, uh, pitch in as well. I just wanted to uh, make mention, in this time of the pandemic, there's a lot to talk about with people. A mm -hmm. lot of people are open to talk. Yes. Because they're talking about their health, they're talking about the vaccine, they're talking about COVID. People are talking. And actually, it's a prime opportunity for us to keep talking to them. Because we have something to share. We have That's something it. that will help alleviate. Because we know that a lot of people that are suffering right now are people that already had like a bad background health-wise. Yeah. And we're, we're trying to, um, and that's what I love what Fleming said, we're trying to also uh, tend to that group of people as well uh, by sharing um, information as to how they can get their health up to par. Mr. Cook. I might question how you wanna share it and you don't know the language. Good question. <laughs> Good and question. that's why I am, God has blessed me, I can speak a little bit Spanish. And it, it's one thing. Mr. Cook is putting us <laughs> on blast right now. Um, we, just an intermezzo here. Him and, uh, and Danny are the Spanish speaking ones. So they're making it very, or at least Danny was humble about it, but Mr. Cook is putting it out there. <laughs> That is fine. Speaking. Well, God, God is good. We'll catch up. <laughs> Go ahead. And that is, uh, I find God so good. Right. And uh, when I was small, uh, watching the Venezuela. national Venezuelan uh, uh, channels, mm -hmm. uh, asked, gave me some uh, yeah words, and I could learn Spanish, Spanish. through these uh, mm -hmm. channels. Mm -hmm. And today, it is a blessing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and that I. And I see now already I'm helping my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in, in, in that uh, uh, to translate. When you first came here, you were the one, I mean, without getting to know us, yeah. they relied on you because exactly. you spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, and uh, it is not so easy because my native language is Papiamento. I'm speaking on English and the Spanish and the Dutch. 
So it is a blessing that uh, I want my children also to understand and pursue that language is something very important. Yeah, yeah, sure. Don't underestimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? and uh, God has blessed me with that, mm -hmm. and I'm very glad I can help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, with that, so the things can be done. Mm -hmm. The one thing also I'm very glad to is to uh, be in the construction side. Mm -hmm. You know, helping in uh, in building mm -hmm. things uh, and think about. Uh, how we can do this, how we can do that, uh, organize, organize uh, the things, you know. Uh, that is, I'm being blessed with that, and I want to put myself in that. Mm -hmm. And one, this, one thing we want to do also is the people come here to, to help them and teach them, work with them, because they are our, uh, those who have to give the message. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, and, and, and that's why we, have, we, need, we need the pandemics. Mm -hmm. We not come here thinking that we know all. We don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. We need them, mm -hmm. and uh, and we gonna work with them, and so they can know Jesus through this ministry. In this right. ministry, we have so many things to do, mm -hmm. so many things. Mm -hmm. So the vacancy is open. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Asher, you want to add up? You, you want to jump in? You want to jump in now? Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Um, I think it's important to, uh, to meet my family, but mm -hmm. through ministry and how Jesus, you know, he healed folks, I, I think they have open ears. When right. You, when you do that, you go, um, and I, like you said, it's, 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 that's how you minister to people, you meet the needs, mm -hmm. and then you can now, uh, you know, share the gospel. Right. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> There are a few things uh, that, and um, it's a good thing that you, you, you spoke about that, Joe, about language, because that's something people have access in making this transition. Like, why are you guys going to Panama? Yeah. And that is one of the things that stops some people from making certain moves because they're fearful of, hey, I'm going in, out of my comfort zone, I don't speak the language. Um, but my question has always been, how do, do people learn new languages? <laughs> a lot of times it's by showing yourself out there. My, my dad, for example, he moved from Guyana to the Netherlands, didn't speak a word Dutch. Um, and then we ended up there and now we speak Dutch. The next generation benefited. He understands. Um, and if you're serious about sharing this gospel, one thing is ne necessary is that we need languages language. yes. um, to be able to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. So um, that is another way of development because we've always said country living is about character development, but it's just about development in general. Okay. It's about education. That is one of the gifts God gives us, mm -hmm. is the gift of language. And it is not just talking and don't understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but it is a way it's a gift that God has given us mm -hmm. to share, and we can share the gospel through that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, um, another thing, and obviously for the viewers who are going to watch us, some are from our faith, and some they might from a different walk of life. One of the things that you have to understand is, I mean, when I came here, my background is computer science. Yeah. Okay, I'm an engineer by trade. Mm -hmm. And I had the right attitude. I mean, I became an electrician. Okay, um, I'm not certified an electrician, but I could work with mm -hmm. electrical work. I'm working with, with pipe, with plumbing. Plumber, plumber, plumber. And, um, and again, I mean, if you got the right attitude, being here, having the peace that I have, and having the wisdom that God gave us, this, I, I realized that I, that I became such a handy man. Mm -hmm. And I never knew I had it on me, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what my wife says, uh, hey, you always had it, you just didn't know, put it to the practice. Mm -hmm. And it's, and everything, and, and especially if you're working with the Lord, I mean, He's going to bless you in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going back, talking for us who know what we are to do, okay? I mean, the time, I mean, we have to look at what's happening right now in the world. And, and the question is, ask yourself, I mean, where do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that we have to reach out others. We know that we need to the the, the prophecy is getting fulfilled, mm -hmm. and we know how the book is going to end because mm -hmm. we read it. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, yeah. so now the question is, how much would you like to wait? Um, <clears throat> I never forget. I was listening to um, 
Pastor Doug Bachelor, when he says that if you have the means and you can do preparation to leave the country, mm -hmm. do it. Yes, I, we're not asking by no means jump and come on to the country. Yeah. But we have to start taking steps, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and the first step is develop the relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will tell you what to do next. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yes. Yes. He, will, he will guide you mm -hmm. to what to do. And, um, and I feel that so much knowledge has been given to us. Mm -hmm. and, I want, and I want to add up from the Bible and from the spirit of prophecy. When we look what happened to Lot mm -hmm. and his daughters, yes, they escaped from Sodom. But they were already corrupted. Mm -hmm. Their character, they yeah. were corrupted. Mm -hmm. And what the spirit of prophecy says, that it's impossible mm -hmm. to develop a character Christ-alike mm -hmm. living in the city. He's not saying, hey, by the way, there's an opportunity. No, no, no. It is impossible mm -hmm. to develop a character. Mm -hmm. So for us parents who have children, mm -hmm. we are, the, the Lord is telling us, there's no way around it. Mm -hmm. And especially the times that we are mm -hmm. living and um, you know it's sad to look what happened to Lot. You know that will happen to many who refuse to do the Lord's will. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I want to transition a bit now into the project itself. Sure. Um, so we spoke uh, now as okay. Why why do we want to do this? Um, Panama. Um, I didn't ask that question. Why Panama? Um, what made it so attractive to us? Uh, maybe you can just spend um, one minute, two minutes, as to in, uh, fill that in. Uh, why Panama? Why Panama for you, Fleming? Well, initially it was in Panama. Mm -hmm. It was just country living. Mm -hmm. You have a goal. You know what you want to do, and it was about uh, just country living in general. And first, we did look at Guyana. Mm -hmm. uh, but that fell through and so we start looking around the Caribbean mm -hmm. to see where can we do country living and happened so um, a friend contacted a friend I think via you mm -hmm. and he said hey what about Panama what's like I never even dreamt of coming to Panama or going to Panama I knew very little about Panama mm -hmm. so we said we, we looked for some um, property online mm -hmm. and we said you know what looks good mm -hmm. uh, price range looks in our budget mm -hmm. hey let's go mm -hmm. Panama and to go see it physically and let's go check so when we came here from the airport just driving to uh, our uh, apartments it was so luscious green mm -hmm. right I mean the people are so nice also mm -hmm. um, just the nature, the tranquility. Mm. It just felt like, yeah, this, this is cool. a place that, you know, you can settle down. That's without even seeing the land. <laughs> but before even seeing the land, it's like, oh, it's nice. Yeah. It's, it's very nice and it's very beautiful. And uh, they really do a good job with landscaping. Mm -hmm. Very good job. And from that, we went to view the, the, the properties and we just uh, fell in love. Mm -hmm with the properties and the people and yeah so that is why Panama. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. nice um i uh, yeah because we don't we don't have much time to to, to dwell on mm. each point mm -hmm. um but uh just for for clarity indeed um we have we came in by ourselves we actually met danny up here and that's mm -hmm. that of itself mm -hmm. is um uh, it's providential. it's a providential Absolutely. and God putting people together. Ash came from another direction, um, so that we all ended up here together, um, wanting the same thing, but coming from a different uh, background or mm -hmm. uh, um, and places uh, without places, places as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe Fleming told us from our perspective, but I would maybe, maybe want to hear from Ash. Why Panama? Danny, we kind of have an idea. He had some affinity with this place. It's a great here. country. Um, <laughs> but maybe Ash, I mean, you're American. Why Why you're coming up here, man? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, I, I, I would say Panama is beautiful. But the, the, give the backstory of Panama. My wife and I, my wife is 
I guess you could say half Panamanian. Her father was born in Panama and her grandmother and so on. Um, but that was her biological father. And she only met him when she was probably in her 20s. Um, mm. And we got married and we said, you know what, let's take a honeymoon trip to Panama. We went to Rio Hato and we were able to enjoy Panama. Uh, it was on a resort. But on the way, we saw the, the simple living. And I always said to myself and her, like, well, I could live here. You know, I could live here. And um, I didn't know we will end up living in Panama. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but, yeah, and, and like you said, the people, I love, to, like, when I go to the Caribbean, like St. Croix and things of that nature, people say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And I just, I just find that so comforting. It's, it's, it's welcoming when somebody greets you. They don't know you. Um, you pass them by the street and they greet you. Um, that's the same thing that happens in Panama. Uh, mm. You know, buenos dias, buenos, buenos dias. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's automatic, and uh, that's comforting. It says, "Hey, like, have a good day." You know, essentially. Um, I don't know you, but I'm willing to talk to you, and mm. and I and I find that just so comforting and welcoming. Um, that's just just yeah. one of many things um, in Panama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want us to move. Thank, thanks, thanks, for that uh, that insight. I want us to move over to the project. Like, we are embarking on a project that is much bigger than us. We knew it um, from when we started it. Um, that was. Um, before we met uh, Danny and Ash, uh, this was something a lot bigger than us. Um, and um, my question is, what got us involved in something so big? Something over our head. People will look at it and say, hey guys, this is a, a bit extreme, this is a bit out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about 40 acres, you guys, purchase and you want to develop it and you want to have a lifestyle center and you want to help people you want to grow food it's a bit much we understand the transition you're going to live there with your family build a little greenhouse and whatnot but why why all of this listen um you know as christians one thing you know for sure is that you serve a big god you know god said in his word the cattle on a thousand hills are his if i was hungry i would not tell you in that um you know, I, I, that, that speaks to me as a human resource manager. Um, God is the owner of all resources. He has resources. So um, this, this, this is telling me that there's nothing too big for God to realize. One, there's only one condition. You make sure you're doing God's will, and he will carry the bill. You make sure that it's, uh, it's something that he has spoken to you through his word, to his prophet, and um, align yourself, you make it a prayer request to God, and you say, God, here I am. I'm willing to do your will. Show me. And it's, 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 it's a journey with God. It's, it's, a, it's a walk with God because reading faith in the Bible is one thing, but uh, exercising faith in practice is mm -hmm. another something. Mm -hmm. you know, so you have to make sure, first of all, is that you are doing His will and that you have His backing and that, you're, you know, that, you, that your life speaks out... Um, in accordance to, um, just as Jesus like spoke out in ministry and uh, want to glorify his Father, we have to make sure that whatever we are doing is not to bring glory to ourselves, but to uh, minister to others, minister, for, uh, minister um, to others uh, that God will get the glory. And um, God wants, he said, uh, above all, I wish that thy soul prosper. And that's um, just to say that he, God don't want us to be sick. So when he said, um, the right hand of the gospel is a uh, ministry of healing. You wanna, you wanna be part of that work. You wanna, you wanna go with God. And you wanna help um, be a part of something that is gonna help bring healing about to people. There's a lot of suffering mm -hmm. in the world, and if you can align yourself and follow His blueprint as how to reach those persons out there, and be it a wellness center, be it um, a agriculture project, um, caring for the poor. Um, it's all about um, bringing in the gospel to them by attending to their needs. So the wellness center is going to come. It's going to come as long as we um, keep um, following his path. Mm -hmm. It's going to come. And we know we have sponsors out there. We know we have people that 
um, with, with, with God would impress that would um, give to this project because it's not about us, mm -hmm. but it's about what all we can do together mm -hmm. um, for the betterment of um, our fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. What I would like to say, uh, and then um, I would like to hear from uh, Daniel and Ash in, in a while. Um, what I would um, want to mention, this project is indeed bigger than us. However, it's not bigger than God. I keep mentioning mm -hmm. that to people. And the suffering in this world is very big. Mm -hmm. And uh, it means that in the Christian world, we have to provide some type of um, alleviation uh, from that suffering, mm -hmm. from the poverty, from the health uh, 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 aspect. And that's why we decide to embark on the project that is able to cover those grounds, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I want to also say this, this is in once it's something is in God's will, He is going to provide it. Mm -hmm. says God's will, His will. Mm -hmm. However, a project like this can fail, and we are subject to fail. Uh, if we lose the core and center, which is to glorify Christ in what we're doing, which is to serve in what we're doing, and uh, why a project like this can fail uh, is. Um, is the human element is if we get in our own way right that is what I believe is um, usually happens and um, I want to say from by God's grace that that's not going to happen here because we are intentional in putting God forward we have been looking at blueprints as in Madison we have been reading certain books to align ourselves right and then from there, looking at mistakes people made, learning, learning from, from them, them, and then move forward. Mm -hmm. So that is important. I believe that's an important aspect right. of doing things like this together. You have to be on the same page, understanding which direction you want to go in. Then I want to ask Danny and Ash, okay, you guys met us trying to do this thing. Um, what, what made you want to uh, uh, think think to be a part of this because these guys trying to do something that is out of this world um, what, 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 what intrigued you about this project? You want to go first Ash? Or? Yeah sure, sure <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so uh, I mentioned before God is pulling, pulling me and my family uh, I really meant it and Prior to even meeting anyone here on, in this in this men's group here, we were talking. Um, God has shown me that that we need to move. Uh, we need to get back to the basics, right? And um, and it's been like I said, it's been some time trying to pull my wife, trying to figure out. When, at one point, it was Africa, all this stuff, and and then, you know, I didn't know where, but I God gave me the vision, saying, "Hey." This is how it should be, um, and then and then and then ministry was something that's very important to me, um, and I want to do that on a full time basis. And I don't want to do the other things, you know, the other corporate things much anymore. Although you know we may have to do that for some time, but um, the goal is to to minister to people and serve people okay. for the rest of my life, right? Um, but he gave me the vision to have some type of wellness center. I think we were calling it wellness center. And we were looking at properties in Panama and we we're saying, hey, there's like a, a hotel property um, that was, you know, they, I guess maybe they abandoned it or something of that nature. And there were like three or four homes. And I was talking to my wife, Trinice, and I was like, man, we, we can probably get this and then we can start something. And but I said, this, this project is too big. I don't, we don't know anybody, you know, and, um, and, and I, we didn't know how to do it. And, and then we saw this video. On YouTube, uh, of of uh, of Ruben and and, and Rosalind uh, on something separate, you know, just just information about Panama that we're just trying to consume, trying to learn more about it, and they were saying the same exact thing that God gave us um, of of food is health and and getting back to the basic, getting back to Eden, um, and then you guys saying. All the things I was like, wait a minute, this is too crazy. I had to comment on the video and I had to add Ruben because 
I just, it was divine. It was divine. Um, and I didn't know how to do this thing because it was too big. And, 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 um, and I know having an entrepreneurial background, you have to have a team. You have to have a committed team. Everybody, you don't have to be on the same page, but they have to have the same goal. Um, because everybody's, you know, one person may be the arm, the other person's the leg, and, you know, they're all part of the body. Um, and, and it's easy for me to say this, this will succeed because the way I, God introduced me to this, this ministry, um, and what he gave me before and the vision you guys had is just, it's, it's not by happenstance, not at all. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Now, now Danny, this crazy people <laughs> starting a, a project, raw land, uh, nothing, no structure on it. Everything has to start from scratch. Why would you want to be a part of mm. this? Well, for starter, um, before I even got to know you guys, we wanted to do something on our own, something mm. small. Mm. I, I figure that given the land that we have, we can start something, you know, cater to few people here and there. Mm. But then I remember there's, there's a minister down close to Costa Rica here in Panama, which happened to me. The, it's, it's a wellness center. They are currently doing that. They've been doing it for two years. I'm, I'm sorry. I've been doing it for two years mm -hmm. since I got here to Panama. But they went ups and down, ups and down mm -hmm. to be where they are today. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that had to do with leadership. Mm -hmm. People have pulling their own ways and wanting to do things their own way. Mm -hmm. So they, didn't, they never came as a unity with one goal. Mm -hmm. Now, praise the Lord, they are currently doing it. Mm. However, they, they're too far from where I live. It's about a two hour drive. Mm. And I was like, I will help you guys as much as I can, mm. but I can't be here. Mm. Is it that I move here mm. or why well, well, can't you just do it? Mm. So then one of the, one of the, the people who, who's in charge there, he came to my house and he saw, you know, my, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and he said, hey, Danny, I mean, you, you, you do the ministry, you just don't know it. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, mm. you have your hands full at, at, at this point. Mm. And, um, you know, just give it a time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, fine. I felt that I wanted to do more. And sure enough, you guys came on board. And I said, hey, you know, this is something that I would like to be part of. Mm. Something that I, that I, that I see mm. doing it. Mm. And um, giving you my... A little bit of experience that I have, yeah. and more into the management side and uh, and delegation side, if you if you want to put it that way, yeah. because at the end of the day, it's like what the, Bible, the what the scripture said about the church. You know, uh, we yeah, all right. make the church, yes, and right. we all have our own skills, talents, and skills mm -hmm. to come together. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we might not have. We might not see eye to eye, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we, we all have the same goal. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, and and like I said, when I when I saw it, I say sign me in, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I feel that we have to do this. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's not me coming here and just forget about the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I we need to reach out to our community. Mm -hmm. We need to mm -hmm. teach others. We need mm -hmm. to help others. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal mm -hmm. to help yeah. others. Yeah. And right now. The times that we are living is so easy to reach out mm -hmm. just through the help message. Yep. Who isn't um, facing some kind of help sickness disease. or mm -hmm. health problems oh, boy. related to um, eating habits? Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, we don't even have to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. We just have to care mm -hmm. by helping them, and right. the rest will come by itself. Mm -hmm. right. And um, so, yes, I mean, and this is, I mean, this is what we are called to do. Definitely. So, we need to fulfill our duty mm -hmm. as a Christian knowing the, the prophecy that God has given us. Mm -hmm. I would just, <clears throat> just say something about the, the project. And Etienne said it, you know, the project is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. We already did know that, even in our ground plans, we already knew it was bigger than us. Mm -hmm. um, we did as far 
as we can go, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then we leave it up to God. It's like coming to the Red Sea and yeah. we say, okay, Lord, we hear, we listen, we were inspired, yeah. we believe this. You brought us here, now what? Now what? Yeah. And God has brought us in contact with some amazing people. Yeah. And Danny is one of them. Mm. And he has, yes, coming to a hash, I just mm. one of them. Danny is one of them. And he has been helping us uh, tremendously in all areas. Mm -hmm. You see what I learned that trust in God, mm -hmm. right? You, you, we cannot see the future, but he can see the future. Mm -hmm. And he would just like us to trust in him. Mm -hmm. um, also meeting Ash, um, it's a blessing and the skill set that mm -hmm. everyone possesses, what Ash brings in. Hey, we need it. And right at, the, at this time, mm -hmm. we need it, yeah. right? Um, Ash is working tremendously hard. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just um, came um, on the team and he's working hard. And, yeah. and Danny. He hit a good morning. And mm -hmm. yeah. also, I would like to give a vote of thanks for the others that are not here who are in the unseen. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many people that have our back. Yep. Amen. Amen. St. Amen. Martin, Guyana, Netherlands, mm -hmm. America, mm -hmm. all over the world. We yeah. have so, yeah. yeah. Kerosene. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have been uh, supporting, supporting us with, with encouragement, with donations, and I would like to give them also a vote of thanks. And yes. because the, the topic is that this project is bigger than us. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you know what? There is a lot of people coming together in order to get this project yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Strength in that, numbers. Right, yes. strength in numbers. And for that, I would like to give God glory. Amen. 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 This conversation is a very interesting one. Um, however, we are I already see that this is going to take longer than one session, so we'll have to cut the video into um, at well, least two parts. Um, so um, stay tuned for part two of this table talk with the men of Back to Eden Lifestyle. Amen.